Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. For nearly a decade, the Mesa Comal program at Conexion Americas has been helping food entrepreneurs get their dreams off the ground. It's known as one of the best commissaries in town for immigrant and first-generation small business owners. And now, there's a brick-and-mortar location where chefs can try out running their own restaurant. It's called Mesa Comal Cafe, and it recently opened on the campus of Belmont University. The, ca- the cafe will feature rotating chefs. First up, Carla Ruiz and Vida La Vila. We'll learn more about her journey and the history of the Mesa Comal program. But first, Tennessee has taken another small step in what's known as harm reduction. This is the idea that for some people who have an active drug addiction, the best thing to do to help them is to use drugs more safely. It's still a controversial concept, but so far, Tennessee's top law enforcement officer is standing by it. WPLN's Blake Farmer, who covers health care, joins us to talk about fentanyl tr- test strips and some of the shifting attitudes about drug enforcement in this state. Blake, welcome back to This is Nashville. Thanks for having me. So, you know, we've talked a bit on the program about fentanyl tr- test strips but remind us what these are. You know, they're pretty simple uh, uh, and inexpensive, kind of like something you, you might have used in a chemistry class in high school, perhaps. Um, you take a small sample of, be it pills or powder, you mix it with water, dip one of these test strips in for a few seconds, let it dry, and in a minute or two, you will see whether the drugs contain fentanyl. Okay, so the Tennessee legislature legalized these test strips this year, They were officially decriminalized in July. I mean, they sound so harmless, so what's the problem? I know they 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 don't sound like a, a big problem, but the problem is that these tips, test strips can also be used by drug dealers. Let's say somebody who wants to say, "Yeah, we we've got the good stuff here. You know, mm-hmm. this is this is, has fentanyl in it, uh, which while dangerous is also uh, can give a powerful high. Maybe they also want to show that their heroin or you know even Xanax pills are not laced with fentanyl, which is also a real problem. So it could be used kind of on both ends of it. Um, but people selling illicit drugs c- could use these test strips. They would be considered drug paraphernalia under the law. So it's really been law enforcement agencies who, um, who you know, handle drug busts who've been skeptical of decriminalizing these uh, innocuous-sounding test strips in spite of evidence that they, they can save lives, especially for injection drug users. You know, just a little bit of fentanyl, especially if it's not what you thought you, you had uh, in hand, can quickly lead to a deadly overdose. So how resistant has law enforcement in Tennessee been? You know, I, I mean, you, you, you never know all the conversations that are happening in the background, but they didn't make a big public stink about it um, in when the legislature was meeting earlier this year. But apparently they did take their concerns to the state's substance abuse agency that was, was pushing to decriminalize test strips. Um, and then that agency showed folks from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the, the national data anyway, which um, has found that roughly 70 percent of folks who use test test strips change their behavior after seeing the results, you know, that there is fentanyl in their drugs. So, you know, that could be using less of that uh, or making sure they have the overdose reversal drug naloxone on hand, maybe even just having someone else nearby who could get help if needed, or, or perhaps they're they're discarding the drugs altogether. Um, we, we've got a clip from TBI director David Roush who says, you know, he's kind of changed his tune on test strips. There are harm reduction strategies that have great evidence behind them. And those are the ones that that we are consistently talking about and consistently looking to see how we can implement them with guardrails uh, in Tennessee to to protect our our citizenry. And Roush likes what he's seen already. Uh, About six weeks in, Tennessee's finding that um, more than 80 percent of people getting these test strips have changed their behavior in some way. Mm. So that, a bit better even than the national stats, though, uh, you know, this is still very limited data here uh, with the program being so new. So where would people get the test strips at this point? Are they for sale? 
Well, state officials are, are, are describing this as kind of a pilot phase, of slowly rolling these out. Right now, uh, they're being handed out primarily through the state's needle exchange nonprofits. Um, so these are folks who, who have um, uh, syringe exchange for, for injection drug users here in Nashville. That's Street Works. And for reference, needle exchange, also another form of harm reduction that you know police kind of had to come around to here in Tennessee and have been pleased generally with how, how it's worked out so far. Now, fentanyl and overdoses aren't just a problem for injection drug users, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we get people who overdose on counterfeit prescription medication that's mm-hmm. laced with fentanyl. Um, we even hear of party drugs like ecstasy actually being laced with fentanyl. So is the state planning to distrib- dis- distribute these test strips more broadly. Well, that's the plan, uh, but they're going slowly. The next step is getting um, what are called regional overdose prevention specialists. They call them ROPES for short, Mm. a little easier. Uh, They they work for the state general. These are folks who are former drug abusers themselves who have been in recovery for some time. Um, uh, These people have been largely um, training folks on how to use naloxone, the overdose reversal drug, get it in the hands of, of folks who are high risk of overdosing. So now they'll all also be uh, distributing these test strips with these kits that they hand out. In fact, uh, uh, these ropes uh, folks are, are putting in their first orders this week as they as they go out into the community. But, you know, will they be sold at a pharmacy? You know, probably not anytime soon. Can you get them on the Internet? Uh, yeah, you, you probably can, actually. So, you know, Tennessee really isn't breaking ground here. Many cities and states have been distributing fentanyl strips for years to reduce overdose deaths. Some are even trying additional harm reduction efforts. Last week, NPR had a couple of stories about safe injection sites in Canada, New York, and Philadelphia. They've also trained medical professionals offering a place for people to use dangerous drugs. Let me ask you, Blake, is that in Tennessee's future, potentially? Well, you know, as we just heard from the TBI director, which which would be primarily the resistance to harm reduction is, is law enforcement. Uh, the current regime here says they're open to harm reduction that's been shown to save lives. Um, but there's really not much discussion on this front uh, about safe injection sites. Uh, only the most progressive liberal big cities are even trying this out. And frankly, there's not all that much data out there to even show that allowing people to use drugs with medical supervision um, um, is as helpful as you might hope. It feels very much like enabling to some, uh, e- even to many in the addiction treatment and drug prevention world. But then again, even like we talked about, needle exchange seemed like it would never happen either. But when fatal overdoses and and uh, associated infections like uh, hepatitis C pose mm-hmm. such a threat, we've seen people change their minds a- a- and go the way that will save lives, even here in Tennessee. Blake Farmer is WPLN senior reporter covering health care. Blake, thanks again for joining us. You're welcome. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll visit the new Mesa Comal Cafe and hear from the first restaurateur to operate the space. Have you been a part of the Mesa Comal culinary program? Tweet us at This Is Nashville. We'd love to hear about it. We'll be right back. Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil Ekelona, and this is Nashville. It's lunchtime, and every table at the Mesa Comal Cafe is full. The cafe has only been open a few weeks, but plenty of Belmont students are eager to check it out. For some, like M. Mills, it's a chance to try something new. Um, I'm pretty excited. I've heard a lot of good things. A lot of people have, you know, said it's good. I've seen people eating it, and it looks good, so I'm excited to try it. For others, like music major Josh Cunningham, it's something reassuringly familiar. Um, so I'm, I'm actually from Texas, so like Tex-Mex is a big thing, and this is like kind of the most authentic like Mexican food that I've had since I came to Nashville. So it just kind of reminds me of home in a way. Right now we're going to cook the pork for um, tacos al pastor, which is our, I will say, our star tacos. <laughs> 
Carla Ruiz is the cafe's first chef. She's walking me through her kitchen. She carefully turns over the fork, which is red with seasoning, to make sure everything is evenly cooked. Then she adds thinly sliced wedges of pineapple to the mix. It smells delicious. Carla explains that her tacos are a little different from what most Americans expect. We serve more like authentic mm, street tacos. So we don't have sour cream in our tacos. We don't have lettuce. We don't have uh, any of that. This is just the taco, the salsa, lime, and cilantro. That's a very authentic, that's how you eat it if you go to Mexico. And that's what, that's my, what I want, the people to have the experience as if they were eating in Mexico. That came to us from producer Rose Gilbert. You just heard from Carla Ruiz, and now I'd like to welcome her to the show. Chef Carla, welcome to This Is Nashville. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making me very hungry with just <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> this is a very exciting time for you. So how have things been at the cafe so far? Uh, it's been good. It's, uh, you know, it's like every new business. It's very... Um, a lot of new things coming, things that you don't expect, but um, like you know, you just try to 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 fix it and keep going, and um, from one problem just create another opportunity mm -hmm. and keep going. But honestly, I'm very thankful because the people are loving it. We are so happy, and we're so happy to serve uh, the Velmont community. We're so happy to be there. And we're so excited for the things that are coming in. Like, like we can wait to, to you know, it's, it's, it's so much things. It's like a Pandora box open with so many good things. And to have specials to work in the kitchen with what we want to do, mm -hmm. we can wait for not just for um, open the path for other coming business, but, um, you know, for... I'm sure it's going to be a success for everybody, and it's been a big effort, but we're so happy to be there. Now, you're on a college campus. Right. I remember when I was in college, I was hungry pretty much 24 hours a day. How busy have you all been? We're being so busy that we weren't expecting to be that busy, so we always have to, you know, produce, produce, yeah. produce, and that's good. Um, we, we're being very busy, and we're so thankful mm. for that. What's the biggest adjustment you've had to make with this? Um... I guess the way that we that I was planning to serve the food, I was very focused. I just want to do it how we do it in Mexico, but is is you have to change some recipes or some um, process the way to cook, mm -hmm. uh, just because because held the, the department because we don't ally some some of our rules with the way that we cook in Mexico but it's totally fine what is most important is what you're gonna eat if you put love and and, and you know you just take care of the food that you're doing people are gonna love it anyway and they're gonna sense what you put in those uh, in that food and that's important. As my mother says, you sprinkle some free on good food, and it's a loving meal for everybody. Totally, yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, I understand that you left family and friends in Mexico and came to the United States in 1999. Correct. And began working in restaurants. Was there anything about Southern-style cooking that took you some getting used to? Totally. I started working at Bed Mill Plantation, um, Marta's at the Plantation, and... I fell in love with Southern cooking. That's why I started doing it. But I also find it very similar to what we do in Mexico in many ways. Like I always compare the cheese grit with the tamales or, mm. I mean, we have so many similar things, different ways to cook. But at the end, I I love the Southern culture because it was all about family together in the table with the meals, the importance of it together, mm -hmm. um, eating at the, you know, at the table. And um, I will say that for me, I didn't know I can cook when I was in Mexico. When I came here and started working at Ben Mill Plantation is when I find out how much I love to do it. And when I find out the people like what I do. Mm -hmm. How'd that feel? So you... 
you discover that you have this talent for right. cooking, that people absolutely love your food. Is that where the idea to starting your own business, is that totally. where it was born? Totally. Right there when I was working there, um, to be honest, the owners of that restaurant, they really, uh, <laughs> they, you know, we have Southern menu, then I'm start uh, selling. I was chef there, so I start selling empanadas or tacos, and they sell pretty good too. Mm -hmm. So we can like have this mix between Southern food with Mexican food, and they play very good together. So that's how the business started because a lot of people call to that Southern restaurant to see if we can host at a Mexican party. Mm. <laughs> so that's how everything is started. So, you know, let's meet one of the people who helped all this happen and make this happen. Jose Gonzalez is an assistant professor of entrepreneurship and management at Belmont University. Jose, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. So you know, this is really cool and interesting idea to have rotating chefs operate a brick and mortar. Where did this idea come from? Well, uh, not surprisingly, it came from uh, being sitting at a lunch table talking to someone uh, uh, at, at Sodexo, which is one of our partners that uh, we are pulling this project together with, um, thinking about um, that op opening spaces and opportunity for the culinary uh, entrepreneurs that work in the Mesa Comal Cafe, mm -hmm. I mean, the Mesa Comal Kitchen that is part of Conexión Americas. We have that program. That's where I met Carla first many, many years ago. And uh, we've always had this dream at Conexión Americas to uh, create a space, a retail space, where our food entrepreneurs, those who are starting, launching their food-related businesses, could have an opportunity to learn, to practice, to test different concepts, and uh, it's been a it's been a dream since we opened the kitchen almost ten years ago. Okay, so give me the basics. How does it work? Well, how it works is uh, so th so the idea again came from uh, partnering Belmont, Sodexo, and Conexión Americas. Right, each one of them having a very specific role in supporting the food entrepreneurs. And so Belmont has had a, a, a space that was already designed for it to be a, a restaurant space. And so we pitched the idea, Belmont and Sodexo, Sodexo pitched the idea to Belmont, Belmont agreed. And so then we uh, came together with Conexión and basically transformed this space into a space that would feel and look like exactly what it feels like when you walk into Casa Safran. Okay. For those of folks that have been there, it's a very vibrant, colorful, very welcoming space, and we wanted to replicate that at the cafe. And so that's how it works. We created this space, and, and we invited, and the idea is that we would invite food entrepreneurs that have a connection to the culinary incubator to come in and uh, test their concepts, uh, expand their understanding, learn some new tricks, and uh, we're just getting started, as, as you heard, and I could not be happier that it's coming together. That's really awesome. What about staffing? Like, does the operator, does Carla have to find staff on her own, or do you, does the program offer her assistance? Right. No, it's it's on Carla mostly. It's on Carla mostly, and I, I would say when you asked her what, what the most challenging thing is, I thought she was going to say that because it's been, uh, of course, we're operating in an environment where, you know, labor shortage is well documented. You guys have reported on this. We all, all know. And so that's that certainly has been the biggest challenge, right? But so because that falls on Carla. So Dexo provides some support as well, but but the the you know the idea behind this is all right. We're, you are in charge of the space. You we will support you. We'll thought partner with you, but um, but go for it. Mm -hmm. And so she has spent many many hours probably on the phone trying to find her staff. I think she's got it to where it needs to be now. Two or three weeks into it, you feel no, comfortable with your staff right now? Well. It's not like right now we're still a little short, but um, we, you know, right, we, we, it was one of the biggest problems that we have with the staffing. It's still, we're not full handed, um, but we have a great team of chefs and people who are helping, but we're still looking for, for, for more people. But I know this is a, a crisis that all the restaurants are having. So we just try to accommodate as much as we can. And sometimes if people are very kind and they understand sometimes that we're short staff, so this is 
something that we share even with our clients. So they're very nice and kind to understand. Mm -hmm. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville, and I'm your host, Khalil Ekelona. We're talking this hour about the Mesa Comal Cafe, which just opened on the campus of Belmont University. Now, Carly, this is a big step in pursuing your dream. So for you, what's the best part about working in the Mesa Comal Cafe? Well, Mesa Comal are always being like, like, my big daddy, like my mom, like they always being there for me. Uh, every project, every dream, everything that I, we always been working together. So for me to have them as a partners and supporting me, it makes me feel like it's going to be okay because I learned some, some more from, most from them. Um, Mesa Comal is behind so many success business that already, you know, they start there and they left, but they open their own business. So for me, it's just um, peace and mind to know that they are behind of this project. And if I need help or if I'm, uh, you know, if I don't know something, I just come with them and they always been there for me. So uh. what is the hardest part of this experience so far? I think the hardest part is, um, you know, restaurant business is one of the, 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 the is, is very, it, it takes a lot of hours. It takes a lot. It, it, you cannot plan. I guess my very close friends know that I never make it to, you know, their um, parties. My daughter knows that I might make it today to the volleyball game or mm-hmm. maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um I think the hardest part is not to be able to be, um, I will say, accountable for people that I love. Yeah. Uh, in my personal life, um, I think that will be the hardest part. Do you do you think your daughter understands your position of what you're trying to accomplish and the sacrifice that that takes? Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Take your time. I think she understand. But it's time that I can know how back together with her. Mm-hmm. She both of my kids know that they understand that I'm at work and that's why many times I cannot make it early or to their games. But I know that in the future they will know why I wasn't there. Yeah, you're you're setting this wonderful example. For both of your children, you have an adult son as well, right? Right. Yeah. Have Have they talked to you about, you know, them feeling so proud of you? Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, Jose, tell me, how does it feel to hear Carla talk about what this opportunity means to her and her family? Well, I'll tell you, it's not her kids that are only that are proud of her. There is so many people, and I'm I'm like right there at the front, right? This This is uh, uh, having known Carla for a long time. Like this moment for her, like opening her own her own space with her own brand, the the the, the uh, concept that she's testing, it really is a very rewarding experience for many of us that have been around her uh, in her orbit and have enjoyed her food and have seen her entrepreneurial journey, and so um, it it means the world. This is exactly the type of work that Conexión Americas is engaged in, helping. Uh, immigrants and refugees in the process of integration in the community and creating spaces for them to prosper and thrive and contribute. And so this whole project brings it together in a very special way. And I, I couldn't be prouder and happier mm. to now, have Conexión América as a, a place that's been very important to me and, and Belmont, that is also a, a very important place to me, to bring them together in partnership with Sodexo and, and making this happen. Mm-hmm. Now, Carla, when I come to Viva La Vida, because I will, I'm coming, (laughs) what should I be sure to order? Definitely tacos al pastor, Mm -hmm. Um, churros con chocolate, they're very good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, We have paletas as well. They made here locally. So, yeah, we have a lot of things that, that, um, I mean, we also have nachos 
and quesadillas, which we love. <laughs> so um, I think everything is very good. We have a very short menu, but it's very good. Okay. Take the horchata. Tell oh, them about the horchata. horchata and high biscuits tea. So we, yes, we, we want you to feel like you're eating in Mexico. I am ready. <laughs> I will be there. That is Carlo Ruiz, the owner of Viva La Vida, which is the first incarnation of the Meso Comal Cafe on the campus of Belmont University. Carla, congratulations and the best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please come visit us at um, Belmont um, uh, Mesa Comal, 2004 Belmont Boulevard, and I can't wait to see you all there. El Pastor Tacos, y'all. Right. I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying. Thank you. When we come back, we'll learn more about the Mesa Comal Culinary Incubator as we'll talk with two people who've been through the program and have introduced us to new and exciting food. Would you like to learn more about the Mesa Comal Culinary Incubator? Are you looking for a commissary? Tweet us at This Is Nashville. We'll be right back. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. For nearly a decade, Conexion Americas Mesa Kamal Culinary Incubator at Casa Asafran has been helping first generation and immigrant chefs get their start, get established, and get out there in Nashville's food scene. Graduates of the program have gone on to create absolute delights of culinary feats. My next guests are two such people. Nadine Moore is chef and co-owner of Beria Babe Food Truck and which currently works out of Mesa Kamal. And Raghab Rashwan is the owner of King Tuts, who started there before moving to his own location. Nadine, Raghab, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to This is Nashville. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. So Nadine, you're currently working out of the Mesa Kamal com Commissary, right? Yes, that's my home. Describe the vibe of the place to us. Uh, Mesa Kamal is a giant community. Um, it, the greatest part about being in a community center is the community. Um, it's a giant space that all of us use to be successful, and we support each other in that. Um, it's definitely home for me. I work there all the time. I'm there sometimes more than I'd like to say, but <laughs> uh, it's definitely the culinary hub of Birria Babe. We create all our magic there. Um, Mesa Kamal has offered us so many different versions of equipment and um, tools that we need to be successful, and it's made our success happen. I love it there. You and your husband have worked as chefs for 20 years. So tell me, how did you discover Mesa Kamal? Um, so we actually had a weird story um, how we started. I started Bedia Bay because I lost my job due to COVID. Um, and I had never been laid off before in my entire life. Um, but I literally was sick for two weeks uh, with COVID, super sick. And the day I returned to work, I was laid off. Uh, so this kind of hit me sideways. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what to do next. Um, my husband had just been on unemployment, but just started back up at Restoration Hardware. Um, because they had reopened their kitchen and funds were a little low and I was just flabbergasted by the situation I was in. So I used that opportunity to fuel Beauty of Babe um, and we created this great trailer and once we were starting to look for a home, Casa Azafran was our second stop mm -hmm. and I absolutely fell in love. The moment I stopped there, uh, the moment I saw the kitchen, the moment I met the management and during our interview, um, it was just the perfect match. Um, there, it's such a bright, colorful space. I am a bright, colorful person. Our truck is a colorful place. Mm -hmm. And it just felt like home the moment I walked in. So tell me, what's unique about your food? Uh, Biria Babe is a sole focus on Biria. Um, Biria is an amazing Mexican stew. It has a ton of flavor packed in there. We marinate for multiple days. Mm. Um, and I am a giant fan of braising meats um, and creating really bold flavors within meats that last for a long time. Um, and Biria is the perfect Mexican stew to do that. And who doesn't love tacos? So Biria create, we create Biria tacos, quesadillas. So it has that kind of hybrid of taco and the stew being together. 
together and it's super flavorful. I am a flavor addict. So Bidia definitely spoke to us when they came down to that. Oh, wow. I'm so hungry right now. So I, <laughs> but I have to ask, Ragab, tell me about the food at King Tut's. Well, um, it's just to trying to do something. Like I grew up, I almost want to be a musician, but it didn't get the opportunity. Okay. So I feel like playing with food and uh, ingredient and spice is just the same as someone making like a music note. Mm. So I enjoyed um, creating things like uh, bringing dishes from North Africa and just like did some twist to it. Uh, so people just enjoyed it and see it their way. Uh, it's uh, I call it is just uh, every dish is just full of flavor. Mm -hmm. It's just a flavorful. So spices, and a lot of spices, uh, fresh spices. I roasted like I buy my own spices. I roasted and I ground it and I mix mm. it together. So I mix every single uh, dish from scratch. Wow. You said you, talk, you you likened it to music. So you're creating these melodies of flavor. It's and exactly. That's is how flavor. I describe it, because I didn't get the opportunity to learn a music, but food for me is the same as some uh, someone who is into music. Well, you're, you're singing a song to my stomach and heart right now. <laughs> so you were at Mesa Comal for a while. How long did you work out of that space? Uh, around five years. Mm -hmm. And um, it started uh, when I moved from New York to Nashville. I, I was uh, struggling to find place. And I met uh, a guy named PG, and uh, he was the president of a food truck association. And he recommended them. So I went, and they, from the first moment, they welcomed me, and they helped me with all the paperwork. They give me, uh, I mean, like for an immigrant who came into a different culture, different language, different lifestyle, you need someone to take your hand, to show you around like a, a, a new student in a school. Yeah. So they did. They have the, the right tools for me. They, they took me from E to Z and I, I worked my way from there and it was a great opportunity. Like they're always... Uh, tracking you to see uh, if you need help, if you are uh, struggling with anything, if there's something in your way. There's always open door for you if you have any questions or any problem. Uh, the kitchen, it's, uh, it, I met some great chefs who always also share in knowledge, helping you to understand the system, how the kitchen work, how, uh, you know, there's always someone to help you. Is that different from other commissaries? Uh, it is. It is. It's like, uh, I mean, for anyone who came from, for me, I recommend it for anyone can, like uh, came from different cultures, have a struggling with English, uh, don't know anything about the system, the city, the codes, uh, how to do to deal with health department, how to learn about safety, cleanliness, aliens, everything like in uh, uh, belong to the kitchen or the food scene you need to go to uh, Gaza Asfaran because they have the right people for you mm -hmm. now Jose Gonzalez is mm -hmm. still with us you're working at Belmont now as we mentioned you but you are also one of the co-founders of Conexion Americas can you tell us more about the Mesa Comal program the culinary program that they have that feeds into the cafe yeah absolutely hearing the stories are just beautiful and it's, it's wonderful this is exactly the impetus behind the culinary incubator when conexion america started 20 years ago one of the first programs that we launched is a program to help um uh, uh, nascent entrepreneurs right mm -hmm. giving them the basics those those that may have come as, as ragab you said from a different country giving them the basics of how to run and operate a business here in the united states not surprisingly many of the folks that were coming through that class Carla was one of those examples where were folks who were launching food-related businesses. And so while many were launching their businesses, of course, they had that limitation of no resources and they, setting up a kitchen is very expensive. And so I had seen a model like this in, in, in another state. And when we uh, decided to build Casa Asafran, uh, and worked with our board and all the supporters, we said, hey, how about, how about opening a commissary kitchen here? And basically, it's a co-working space, the way that it, it's been described. It, it's a co-working space, if you can uh, picture it, is just a lot of people working hard, lots of pots and pans trying their craft. And it's just become a very cultural, rich place because there are people from all over. Uh, but one thing that they have in common is they have this entrepreneurial uh, mindset and dream to launch their culinary 
related business here. And so for the last 10 years, Mesa Comal has been that staple there on Olser Road. And uh, it's it's just so, the energy is so vibrant and so great to see. And, to, and of course, the best thing is the tasting that you get to do, right? You, you hear them describe their... Their uh, their recipes and their passion for their for their food and walking through there and just taking a bite here and there, just smelling it. I imagine uh, he, ne- he never bait for food. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, what's the significance of the name Mesa Comal? Great, great. Well, Mesa is uh, Mesa, of course, is means uh, table in Spanish, right? And as we were when we were launching it, uh, when we were trying to come up with the name, we found out that Comal. Comal in Spanish with a C means grill, right? And so we're like, well, okay, you know, make, makes sense. That's this, this. But we also found out that Comal with a K means community mm. in Kurdish. Mm-hmm. And so we know that about the, the vibrant Kurdish community in town. And so when, when we learned that, when we found that out, well, Mesa Comal became like a no, no-brainer, no yeah. right? It's a place that brings community together to pursue their culinary uh, aspirations. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville, and I'm your host, Khalil Le Colonna. We're talking this hour about the Mesa Comal Culinary Incubator based out of Casa Asafran. Now, I've got to ask, Nadine, when you know you talked about why Mesa Comal is special, I'm wondering if the environment there at, it fosters collaboration between businesses. Have you had a chance to work with other chefs there? Actually, yes. Um, And I love that we all kind of do unique, different things. Um, So actually, I have two really great partnerships. Um, Right now, we are doing a dish on the truck that's a Mexican hot chocolate tres leches cake. Mm. Um, But our cake comes from our vegan baker. Her name is Allison. um, And she makes really delectable treats. And she happens to have cake scraps. And I so happen to buy them from her. Okay. Um, And I was like, I'm not a great baker. Um, but you are, and you have some great cake scraps that are going to waste. I would love to buy those off of you, and I would love to make some really great dress light juice out of it. Um, And so it kind of brings a partnership of both of our businesses. We can Instagram advertise that we're collaborating, um, women supporting women, but also at the same time, um, she saves me a little bit of labor, and I give her a little bit of money for her scraps. Nice. Uh, What's the other co- collaboration you work with? And another person that um, helps us a lot. I think it's not really a collaboration, but it was definitely something that has helped us get onto the market. And it was a connection through Canucks Lands Americas that um, I am so grateful for. Uh, Carla's catering, when we first joined the kitchen, she actually recommended us to Jackalope Brewery. Um, which is also a women-owned brewery, and that was our first location. And it started us, so Biria Babe, we partner with mostly breweries uh, across Nashville. Tacos and beer are an amazing combination. Um, and so we hop around all over Nashville with different breweries, but she helped me start my first brewery. Mm-hmm. Um, and she got me into Jackalope, and I found out that love of tacos and beer through her. Um, and I am forever grateful that she started that for us and got us that connection. And from here, I've still been at breweries. Now, Ragab, you have a location of your own and you were recently featured on diners, drive-ins and dives. Tell me, what was that, what was that experience like for you? Well, it was a great experience meeting uh, such a nice guy and um, learned from him. And um, uh, it's, it's personally, it's, uh, I feel it like um, an amazing recognition to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, I was had a really rough time starting, and also just like come up, like I had a, like a rough story childhood. Uh, drop school to help my mother uh, raising my brothers and sisters. So that was a great uh, to get recognition by uh, such a, a wonderful guy. Uh, just to show my mother like she doesn't have to be sad mm. and. Um, feel bad about me, like not finishing uh, my education. Yeah. And uh, also just, you know, it's personally, I feel great. That's one wonderful. Now tell me, what dishes did you make for him? Because anybody who watches the show, that's he, one of the uh, best parts. He enjoyed uh, the falafel waffle more. Falafel waffle? Falafel waffle. Wow. Uh, and uh, we did uh, the berry berry uh, South African uh, hot wings. And um, 
he enjoyed both of them, but I think he liked the falafel waffle because I learned he was raised as vegan. Okay. Yeah, so he really, I can tell when he was in the uh, filming, he was going after every bite of that falafel waffle. Mm. <laughs> I have to try it myself. Now, have more people come in to King Tut's because they saw the program? Well, we have seen, we start like, we we had seen people coming from uh, different states a lot. Mm -hmm. We had people from, drove from Pennsylvania, from uh, Kentucky, Atlanta, uh, from uh, New Jersey, from uh, Alabama. I mean, mostly people just like, you know, from Ohio. So people just like, I ask them, where are you from? And they say, we just drove from this place to come to try because we saw you on TV. So... Uh, I feel bad. Some of them I don't really charge. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty generous of you. That's really awesome. And then Triple D fans, if you need to know, that's season 35, episode 17. And it looks like it will be re-airing again on October 29th. Now, Nadine, what do you think this means for Nashville to have a place like Mesa Comal? Mesa Kamal is community for Nashville in food, um, and it's a place that we can support people from different cultures and creating that food. Um, if there's, again, like he said, uh, if there's a language barrier um, or a business barrier where you don't know how to you know, execute a certain aspect of your business, they're there to help you. Mm. Uh, most commissaries is just a kitchen that you clock in and out, you s assign yourself a specific time, and that's it. It's just a space. Uh, but Mesa Kamal is, it's more than that. It's, they send us emails with grants that are available. They help support us. Um, they brought me here today. Yeah. Um, and just kind of giving us little opportunities that I don't think we would get anywhere else. Um, and just knowing that we're, part of a community center that offers other things in that building that help the community, knowing that the rent that I pay goes towards possibly some of those things, that makes me feel really good. I'm not just paying a random rent, I'm paying into a community center uh, that has a, a facility that you can get medical services, you can help with kids. Um, they have a child learning center. Um, they also, also offer a lot of programs to help people in the community to learn like computers and stuff like that. So I just think in general, knowing that I'm part of that makes a big difference and I'm not just paying regular rent. Mm -hmm. Now, when I hit up your truck, what should I order? Oh, definitely the birria tacos. Okay. Um, we have really good birria ramen as well. Um, we make our homemade broth, and it's like a Mexican-inspired bowl of ramen. We're getting ready to sell a bunch of that for the fall. Uh, all right. I'll be ready. Ragal, <laughs> real quick, I've got about 15 seconds. What should I order aside from the falafel waffle when I come to King Tut's? Oh, uh, you. Uh, every week we do special, but our really highly uh, recommended is the vegan plate or the lamb chops. Lamb chops. Lamb chops, indeed. We're going to make that happen. That is Raghav Rashwan, owner of King Tut's. He was joined by Nadine Moore, co-owner of Birria Bay Food Truck, and Jose Gonzalez, assistant professor at Belmont and co-founder of Conexion Americas. Congratulations to you both. Thank you all for coming on to the show. Thank you. It's Thank a pleasure. You. We want to thank everyone who tuned in this hour. Tomorrow, we will talk with Dr. Alex Jahangir, who has written a book based on the notes he took while he served as head of Metro Council's COVID-19 response. This is Nashville as a production of WPLN News and Nashville Public Radio. Our show is only possible because of your support. We're in the midst of our fall fund drive, so we need you to step up and to make your contributions now at thisisnashville.org. While you're there, you can listen back to all of our episodes. Our producers are Steve Harouche and Rose Gilbert. Our digital lead is Anna Gallegos Cannon. Michaela Elias is our technical director. Our executive producer is Andrea Tuthope. The masterminds behind our theme music are Lorange and Namir Blade. Special thanks to Java, Hemat, and Renata Soto. The conversation doesn't end here. Tweet us at This Is Nashville. I'm Khalil Ekolona. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. And be good to each other.